Hi everyone. I am Dr. Ashok Kumar Nayak. Welcome to Dr. A. K. Nayak's Geology Sphere. Today we will discuss about somatic cells. Okay. Let's now see what are somatic cells. You all know the body of an animal is formed of many cells. Okay. So these cells are divided or classified in different ways. Some are classified based on their presence in the organs or tissues. We say skin cells or we say kidney cells we say epithelial cells like this but based on the functions in sexually reproducing animal there are two functional types one is germ cell other is somatic cell. Germ cells are present in the bonads. They produce the gametes, sperms, and ova by the process of gametogenesis. As you know, gametogenesis is nothing but meiosis. And their number is very, very small. There is a very small number of germ cells present exclusively in the gonads. Male gonad, that is male sex organ, the testis. Female gonad, called the female sex organ, that is the ovary. Okay. So now, then what are somatic cells? Very simply we can understand like this. If you take out the germ cells and their progeny cells from the body of an animal, then remaining cells present in the body are called the somatic cells. Now you may think uh, what are progeny cells of the germ cells means the cells which are produced from the germ cells okay so now this is what is somatic cell we can define like this somatic cells are the cells of the body excluding the germ cells and their progeny cells. So, all body cells minus the germ cells and the progeny cells of germ cells is equals to somatic cells. Understood? Now, let us see why some cells are called somatic cells. Some are called germ cells and some are called somatic cells. Okay. So now, the word somatic has been derived from the Greek word soma. Soma means body. So, we say the somatic cells as body cells. But the fact is that our body is formed of, as I told you before, germ cells and somatic cells. So entire body has two types of cells. But somatic cells are generally called body cells because they form the major part of the body. Okay. 
Well, now let us see what are the characteristics of somatic cells. Somatic cells uh, are deployed in nature. That means each somatic cell has two sets of chromosomes. One set is contributed by the paternal parent or father and the other set is contributed by the maternal parent or mother. So it is represented uh, as two ends, two N. Now if you take the example of a human male somatic cell, it has two sets of autosomes and XY as sex chromosomes and a human female somatic cell has two sets of autosomes and two X chromosomes and you know capital A represents the autosome X and Y represent sex chromosomes. Further, there are some other characteristics of somatic cells also. Uh, somatic cells uh, divide by mitosis. You know mitosis is also called equational division. And mitosis of a somatic cell results two identical daughter cells. Now, you know, the somatic cell is deployed to N. Now, if a deployed somatic cell undergoes mitosis, it produces two daughter cells. Each daughter cell is deployed like that of the parent cell also. Further, I am to add that somatic cells do not have any role in sexual reproduction. Right? And another important characteristic is that somatic cells develop from all the three germ layers in triploblastic animals three germ layers, ectoderm, endoderm and mesoderm and all two germ layers of diploblastic animals like ectoderm and endoderm. You know the diploblastic animals uh, are the cylinderates and above cylinderates of two men the animals are triploblastic animals. Okay, so finally we can say the somatic cells develop from the germ layers of the embryo. Now let us see which organs do have somatic cells. You know, all organs of the body have somatic cells. But the gonads have both somatic cells and germ cells. So we can say the somatic cells are present in all organs including gonads because sometimes uh, we think that gonads have only germ cells. No, it is not like that. Gonads have both somatic cells and germ cells and so the Somatic cells are present in all the organs present in our body. Now, let's take some important examples of somatic cells. You know, somatic cells uh, are present in all types of animal tissues. 
there are uh, four types of animal tissues epithelial tissue connective tissue muscular tissue and nervous tissue epithelial cells like columnar epithelial cells cuboidal epithelial cells squamous epithelial cells they are somatic cells similarly cells of connective tissue like your adipose cells blood cells bone cells cartilage cells they are also somatic cells similarly muscular tissue have the somatic cells like skeletal muscle cell smooth muscle cell and cardiac muscle cell and finally nervous tissue have somatic cells like neurons and glial cells you know glial cells are uh, astrocytes oligodendrocytes microglia ependymal cells okay now here in this slide you can see a neuron of man which is a somatic cell finally we will discuss about the biological significance of somatic cells somatic cells they serve nearly every part of our body as i told you earlier they are found in all tissues and all organs so they are called as the building blocks of the body and uh, they play vital role in our tissue growth in repair and also in maintenance and in some lower organisms say in case of flatworms like flanarians somatic cells also help in the process of regeneration of the lost limbs or lo lost other types of organs and you know regeneration is a type of asexual reproduction so you can say somatic cells apart from tissue growth repair and maintenance in some cases they also play a major role in the process of regeneration there are few other examples of biological significances somatic cells do not participate in sexual reproduction do you know why yes because they do not have the power of undergoing meiosis and it must be noted that meiosis is a prerequisite for sexual reproduction now another thing you should keep in mind that somatic cells do not transfer genetic information to the next generation and finally any mutation in the somatic cells of an individual will not affect its offspring the mutation whether it is chromosomal mutation or genetic mutation mutation at gene level that will not transferred to its offspring that is all about the somatic cells in a nerve cell so finally 
all are requested to give a comment, a like to this topic and also share this topic and please do not forget to subscribe Dr. A.K. Nayak's Geology Sphere. This topic will definitely help students appearing for class 12 examinations conducted by CBSE, ICSE, CHSE Odisha and other state boards. This will also adequately benefit the candidates aspiring to crack NEET for admission into MBBS, BDS and also those appearing different examinations for admission into Bachelor of Pharmacy program. Thank you again. I will come with the next episode, episode very soon and that will be on the counterpart of the somatic cells that is germ cells.